Hello there, just looking through some of my old radio handbooks. This one's from 1942. Some great designs for AM transmitters and these. Instead of using your stupid single sideband rig for AM all the time, why don't you build a proper transmitter with things that glow? I don't care about the modern solid state Hoosie Watsits. I prefer the retro look. Here we have a homemade 80 meter AM transmitter. It's made up with a crystal oscillator and driver, the output stage, modulator and power supply. Looking in the back of the transmitter we see the power supply and the solid state modulator. The modulator is a 150 watt PA amplifier. It's matched into the transmitter with a UM3 modulation transformer. They're almost full high fidelity quality. We'll have a look at the output stage and the driver in more detail. We'll just take out this exciter rack and have a look. There's a bit of extra stuff on this chassis, but basically it's just a single 6L6 crystal oscillator. There's a metal 6V6 and the output coil which is tapped to feed the grid of the 813. You can see how beautifully built it is. A couple of RF chokes, the crystal, a little trimmer capacitor to keep it right on frequency, tuning capacitor there for the output, a few biasing resistors. It's pretty much a simple circuit like this. All the photographs in the book look so good. I don't know why mine never turn out like that. I can vary the drive, have a look at the plate current with this meter, although it's fairly low power and nothing bad's going to happen to it. Now I've got it here, I might do a bit of maintenance, so I'll just tweak the uh, frequency. Haven't checked it for a few years, seems pretty spot on, let's see. I think that might be good enough. The main power output stage, again not very pretty but it does work. The ubiquitous 813. Still a magic valve today. The plate choke. Parasitic stopper. Main plate tank coil in the Pi network. This choke protects the antenna ever getting HT on it by shorting it to earth as far as DC is concerned. Another protective arrangement is a relay in the cathode circuit, so if the current gets too high it just trips and turns the whole thing off. That's a resistor there to adjust that trip off current. This big transformer just supplies 5 amps at 10 volts for the filament of the 813. As you can see underneath there's not very much there really. This chassis originally had an AM VHF transmitter in it so all the parts are basically pointless so it's been totally rebuilt and just the metal work used. I hate metal work usually. I like being able to monitor the grid current, the screen current and of course also the most important thing, the plate current.
the Pi output stage of the coil, two capacitors, it'll load basically into anything from about 10 ohms to 200, so you don't need to worry about SWR and all those silly things, you just tune it up until it works. I like to have a grid bias voltage in case something goes wrong with the drive and you don't pop your valves. As well as the protection circuits, I put slow blow fuses everywhere in case something goes really wrong. I adjust the grid voltage and screen voltage to the highest possible output at the lowest possible HT. So I get about 100 watts out at 900 volts. The circuit we're basically using, but of course we're using a Pi network instead of that link system there. Of course again, my stuff never looks the same as it does in the book. I'm more worried about what it sounds like. If there's an overload, the protective cutout operates. And it all goes off. Can reset it. There we are. We'll stick an old branch replay on and give it a test. seconds. You know, everyone's not quite sure whether they're dolphins or sharks. You know, you can you see these fins coming towards you, whether to sort of wave to it or, or scream, you know. Drains you could fall down and yeah. There's one I always wanted to explore, to where 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 the road crossed over, the gutter disappeared into this thing with a wooden lid over it. And it came up on the other side. But in the middle of the intersection there was this grill, a circular grill, and you looked down it and you couldn't see the bottom. You could either walk straight into them or... Um, no, we never managed. None of the tunnels from the Gulf Links ever led back to this mysterious grating. Oh, I suppose you'd, you'd see what was at the bottom, I don't know. Oh. Some days you could see the bottom. It was sort of water down there. I think it was about 20 feet. Yeah, you know, you're sort of crawling through this pipe. Yeah, and my cousin was behind me. And I started to feel quite claustrophobic because I was having all these pictures of torrential downpours. With the pair was getting jammed up in the thing and, and not being able to breathe terribly well. And, um, yeah... Except if you hit a really hard bump, the, the body used to jump up in the air slightly off the wheels and come back down slightly to one side, um, whereas before if you'd had your weight in the centre you'd go in a straight line, after it hit the bump and came down um, off angle, if you kept your weight in the centre it would be veering to one direction.